All right, let's go ahead and connect some functionality here to our new radio button UI elements. I'm gonna go ahead and select one and then head over to the uh, object name and copy this field. I'll grab the code. And I'm going to need to create some new variables here. And I'll just call this one radio sphere. I go ahead and paste my object name and then we'll copy all the stuff but I need to update the class this is not a push button it is a Q radio button if you forget to update this the code may not fail but it will not work so you want to make sure I think basically like this will just evaluate to none if this is if this is incorrect so if you try to do something with it later on you you may end up getting an error so just a thing to be mindful of very very important that this gets updated so now we'll go ahead and create some references to these other objects. All right, now I need to update the name here. We don't want to limit this to make sphere. So, oops. Well, that make geo and we'll update the label as well. Go ahead and save that. So now the UI has been updated. We've added the radio buttons, but we need to update this. So this is our uh, variable, our reference to the, the not, no longer in existence make sphere button. So we'll rename that one make geo make geo, and then we'll rename our function down here, make geo. So we need to take a quick look at the documentation here for Q radio button class, because essentially what we want to find out is when we call this function, our make geo function, which radio button is selected. So just like Q push button, Q radio button inherits from Q abstract button. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. And what we're looking for here is a public function, which is going to be is checked. So this is going to return true, false. And uh, as soon as we find which one is checked, we can go ahead and create the geometry. So down here, we'll go ahead and create a quick conditional. So if this evaluates as true, we'll go ahead and create a sphere. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And we'll update this to cube. And this to cylinder. And then if I didn't show this before, take my word for it. This is all you need to do to call the Maya function that will create a, a cube or a poly cylinder. Go ahead and save it. We'll hop over to Maya. Run the code. A little error. 43. It looks like I'm still referring to this button here, make sphere. So that's going to be this one. I just need to update this to geo. Pretty useful. It'll tell you like what line you got the problem on, and then it'll tell you what the issue is. So those, those uh, errors can be Pretty handy. Make sphere. Ah, right. I need to update the, the name of the function that we're calling as well. Try that one more time. All right. So with sphere selected, if I hit the make geo button, I now get a sphere. With cube selected, I will now get a cube. And with cylinder selected, I get a cylinder. So that is a quick and easy way to create radio buttons, put them into a group. So they are paying attention to the other radio buttons selected status, and then how to do a quick check on the value of whether or not it's checked and then to do something with that data. So what I want to do now is add another extremely useful UI element, the combo box. So I'm going to delete the outer layout, this form layout, which is uh, the grid layout. And then uh, we'll select the vertical layout, which is gonna be the parent layout for my two 
UI groups here. And we'll delete that. These are going to be a little bit problematic, so I'm just going to get rid of those. And then I'm going to grab a combo box and a label, just down here in display widgets. We'll select these two and put them into a column layout. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and just drag this window down a bit. We want to grab these three layouts and then put them into a row layout. Centered a little bit. I'm going to bring back my vertical spacers. And then we'll just hit grid layout. So for the text label, if you wanted to modify it, you could come over here and give it an object name and then, and then very easily change that uh, in the code. But I'm probably not going to do that. I'll just go over here and we'll give it a uh, hopefully meaningful thing there. So the combo box is really useful. There's a really important setting here, which is going to be this size adjust policy. So adjust to contents on first show is the default value. And what that means is, is if I were to populate this thing and then draw the window, it'll just look at all of the stuff that I put in there and make sure that it's long enough for all those things. But if you add anything new to it, it might get truncated. So that's not super useful if you have any intention of modifying the contents, which is a pretty standard thing. So what I prefer here is just the adjust to contents. And that way, if you add something new and it's longer than the combo boxes, it'll just adjust the size so that everything is, is always visible here. So we're only gonna have one combo box here. If you have more than one combo box, obviously you need to give it like a unique name, but I'll just leave it as, as a combo box for now. I don't want to overcomplicate it. So now we have a combo box, which the object name here is going to be combo box, and then the label, and we're not going to worry about identifying that in the code. And you can see here, Q combo box is the class. And we'll just go ahead and copy all this stuff. And I don't remember exactly, there we go, exactly what it wanted to call itself. So now we've got our combo box. So what I want to happen is whenever I add a new piece of geometry, we'll go ahead and add the name of that geometry to the combo box. And then if I select that object in the combo box, it will select the geometry in the world. So. We're going to go ahead and look up the documentation now for Q combo box. And if we go down to public functions, we can find one called add item. And that is as simple as it gets. So what we'll do is we will select our combo box. And then call the function add item. And we need to put something in here. So what are we going to put in there? Let's hop over to Maya for just a moment. I'll open up the script editor and we can close this. So if I run this function, it's going to give me a sphere, but it's also going to print this information here. It's going to give me a list. And that list is going to have P sphere one as the first item and poly sphere one as the second item. And if you look over here, the name of the object is the first item in the list. And then its shape is the second item in the list. So this is technically the transform and this is the shape. So the transform is going to be its location data and the shape is going to have the inputs for how that geometry was constructed. So for instance, you can modify it. So that's the difference between shape and transform. And if you go over to display and you turn on shapes, what we can see is if I expand P sphere one, our transform, I have access to the shape, which is again, where we can get that uh, construction history stuff. This is the initial construction history. If you do other things to it, you'll add new items to your construction history. But anyway, what we want here is the transform, which again, is the first argument here returned by default when you create a piece of geometry. So what I can do is I can say transform 
equals this, right? So, or you could say sphere or shape or whatever, but this is basically gonna be the first item in the list returned by this command. And then you just put transform in there. So I'll go ahead and copy this line for these other two scenarios. And we're just gonna have to copy this and then get the first item from these as well. And uh, this, is, this is easy to look up. If I highlight polysphere, go to the command documentation, what you will see is it will return a string with the object name and the node name. So we, we can pretty much rely on that being included. All right, so we'll go ahead and add the items that we've created to our combo box. So let's see if it works. Let me save it. So our little combo box, currently there's nothing in it, but if I make a sphere, there's our P sphere one. If I make a cube, there's our cube. And if I make a cylinder, there is our cylinder. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and finish up this combo box section here. If we scroll down to the signals, what we can see is there is a signal that's emitted when the current text is changed, as in something else has been selected. So we'll go ahead and set that up. Here is our self dot combo box dot. So this is the signal clicked here in the case of a button. And in the case of the combo box, it's gonna be current text changed. And then we'll just make a new method here. Call it update selection. So what we're gonna do initially is we're gonna go ahead and get the selection. So if we wanted to get the current text, I believe that's gonna be just a regular function, current text. current text. You can also do the current index, but because the text is the actual thing that we want to select, that's all we really need to worry about. Cool. All right. So we're going to get the selection, which would be the current text. And then we're just going to feed it directly into Maya's select function here. So let's see where that gets us. problem. Line 46. Sorry. We have to connect it. Can't call it directly. So I'll just make a few things. And then we'll select the first one. Actually, I guess I need to change it first, but you can see now that I've selected the, the second one, if I select the first one, we'll go ahead and grab that one. I'm gonna get one of the cubes or one of the cylinders. All right, so there you go. That should be a pretty good starting point on working with combo boxes. In the next video, we will begin to take a look at working with the same kind of workflow, but in the context of Unreal.